of course, one of the teams that we'll be watching closely is a team that's achieved so much over the last three seasons in particular. Just ponder the numbers. 39 wins and three losses over three years. Incredible. You can do, you can do the math. That's amazing. And a, a state championship game appearance, semifinal appearance, quarterfinal appearance. So now it's what have you done for me lately? All they expect out of you is to get to the Dome, right? Joining us now is the outstanding head coach of the Lakeshore Titans, Coach Craig Jones. All right, Craig, so you raised the bar so much, so I guess there's nothing else left to do but to get to the Dome and win, right? Well, that's always the goal for us. You know, obviously we would have wished we had gotten back there last year, you know, but, you know, it is what it is, and we're kind of regrouping and, you know, can try and give it a go this year. You, you saw – you know what it was like, a good 5A program at Mandeville when you worked there uh, with Guy in a really good program. Uh, when you got to Lakeshore and you took over the job in 2013, did you envision that your program could become this kind of program, an elite-type program in 4A? I felt like we could. I felt like being, you know, growing up in, in this area and kind of seeing the success that Mandeville was having and, and where they were pulling their uh, their kids from, and then Fountain Blue was built and kind of took those those kids, and then Lakeshore was built and and took the kids from them in regards to the attendance zones. I kind of felt like Lakeshore was a place that was obviously unknown because it was new, but kind of knowing the area, I, I really had a good idea of what I thought it could grow into. So I, I did feel like it was going to be a good place to try and, you know, get a position at. Well, you got the position, and obviously you've made the most of it to turn this into a – consistent winner and a big winner at that again the numbers right. speak for themselves and craig when you when you look at the success that you've had if you had to point to one or two primary factors as to why you achieved what you have what might those be i like to say and, and every opportunity i get i say this our senior class which was a class of 2016 but it was the season of 2015 that that class really instilled the culture that we we still thrive on and they were the ones that you know kind of helped get the program going in the right direction when they were sophomores in 2013 and juniors in 2014 but 2015 is when they kind of took the bull by the horns and said this is how things are going to be done in order for us to be successful and and every class behind them every class behind them is kind of you know in their own different way has followed the same tune and I really give a lot of credit to that class. Even so many years removed, any opportunity I can get to to give them some praise, I think they deserve it. And, you know, obviously the success we've had kind of speaks for itself, but I really put a lot of credit on those early classes that didn't have the success with the wins and losses, but they really helped create the culture. Right. That's it. Coach, Michael here. Uh, a, a two-pronged question building on what you just said right then. Uh, how many how many kids did you lose from the team last year uh, up to this year? How many did you lose? We graduated twenty plus seniors. Uh, wow. Of them, we had um, just off the top of my head, I want to say we had about sixteen or seventeen senior starters. Right. And from those starters, about eight of them were three year starters. So we, we lost we had- a good bit. Well, let, let, let me ask you then the second part of that question. With the way, with the uh, obviously through the Zoom and the distance uh, that you were having to work through, and the and the and the, the video the video teaching you were going on, uh, what were you doing, or, or or was it was something happening where you could see somebody uh, of that younger group coming up? To, I mean, you got to have leaders, man. Uh, how how were you able to, to tag those ones uh, until you were able to see them in person there? Were you speaking the vision to them, or how were you going about that? You know, it was tough to try and figure out. Who's your leader? There were so, there were so many uncertainties, and we didn't know who our leaders were going to be because we had such a strong senior class that, right. that, we, were, that we were using uh, last year. And, you know, we're still working on it, to be honest with you. We're still working on it on a daily basis to try and figure out uh, who our leader is going to be. And all the things we missed, we missed out on spring practice and having a spring game and having to play against somebody else and potentially face adversity. Because that's when you find out who you can hang your hat on. And all the summer seven-on-seven tournaments and when things get competitive, you know, it's easy to do things on air and practice, but when things get competitive, you really find out what your team's made of. And and nobody, not just us, nobody's had a chance to do that until 
until tonight. You know, so I'm I'm anxious tomorrow night to really get an idea of what this team is made of from a mental standpoint, even before we get to the physical abilities and right. X's and O's and all that. Lakeshore scrimmaging Slidell, a good 5A team tomorrow night. Good measuring stick. Larry's done a good job. They were a district champion last year. That should be a, a solid scrimmage at Lakeshore. All right, Craig, so you talked about losing those significant seniors. Of course, it starts with Christian Westcott and how good he was for you oh, yeah. in your system and, and our player of the year in the metro area for the Great New Orleans Quarterback Club. And, and obviously a significant loss. He's at Southeastern now. Talk about what, you know, what you'll do this year at quarterback. What can we look forward to? Well, right now we've got a junior who uh, who's, we've named our starter. His name's Kempton Hollingshead. You know, he's a he's a different kid than than Kirsten. Kirsten, Kirsten allowed us to do so much in the quarterback run game. You know, Parker reminds me more of the quarterback we had before Kirsten and Parker Orvin, um, or Kempton. I'm sorry. And um, you know, we're gonna. I feel like we're very talented at the receiver position, and we're gonna ask Kempton to, to make smart decisions and get the ball into kids' hands who can make plays in space. And um, you know, he's done a really good job in, in, in really the limited time that we've had to work with him, you know, since June 8th, really, uh, to get him prepared. But he had two solid years as a JV starter, and, you know, he's a guy that I feel comfortable with. And and tomorrow night we'll get a really good look and, like you said, a measuring stick. We'll find out kind of where we are, and we'll find out where he is against somebody who's, you know, running different schemes, and it's just everything's different than it is in practice. You mentioned wide receiver. What would you say are the strengths of your team right now? I'd say the strengths of our team, uh, one on each side of the ball, is definitely our receiver on the offensive side of the ball. And then um, our linebacker position on defense is where we have, you know, at each one of those positions, we've got B.J. Foster at wide receiver, who's a returning uh, honorable mention all-state. And then Devin Wallbacker at linebacker is a returning Honorable mention all state at, at his position. And he's really the guy that is going to assume a lot of the roles that, that Christian Westcott did last year um, from short yardage quarterback and a uh, bunch of responsibilities on special teams and things of that nature. He's the one who's going to try and shoulder a good portion of the load of what we need to pick up that we lost with Christian. Michael? When you're bringing up a young kid like that, especially with the on, on the defense, like there, I mean that you can't count. You, I mean, you can't discount the at least the time you spend with them privately. I mean, are, are you giving them film, or what do they do, and how have you how have you assigned these things, especially since so much was video? Are, have you done things different as far as giving them video and, and film to watch? Well, huddle huddle's a good a great resource for us. And the ability explain to that kinda... explain that to some explain that to some of the folks that are not familiar with that technique. All right, so Huddle is our online software that we're, we upload all of our game film, practice film. Uh, that's you know the days of going and meeting up to a certain location and trading VHS tapes or DVDs have right. gone by the wayside. You can just you just trade online your game film, and the kids have access to that database. They've got their own password and login, and they can go in. Yeah. And when we're walking off the practice field, they're asking, Coach, how long is it going to be until practice practice film is uploaded? Um, you know, so it's wow. a great tool. And they can use it on their phone, their iPad, their, you know, obviously their computer at home. Um, so our ability to, to, to mesh that with the Zoom meetings and have, you know, organized Zoom meetings during, during the shutdown to where we could go over game film and, and we could start doing – you know, basically we had a virtual spring and we just, we would, whenever we met, we said, all right, this would be, this day would have been the third day of practice in right. a regular spring. This is going to be what we would have installed on this day. And, you know, it's a lot of pen and paperwork and, and meetings and stuff like that. But at least mentally we were getting work done and, you know, the kids had a good 30 to, to 45 minutes each day where, you know, at least they could focus on something instead of just wondering, you know, our seniors, Devin, who I mentioned, Devin was a kid who was starting first baseman on the baseball team who lost his junior year. And I'm right. sure the whole summer he was sitting there thinking, am I going to have a senior year with the uncertainties? Right. So 
just to kind of bring them in and say, hey, let's let's ignore all that and let's just focus on football. And when we finally do get the go ahead, let's make sure we're ready. You know, so I feel from that standpoint, we did a pretty good job as a coaching staff trying to block out the distractions. Y'all were psychologists at the same time, man. <laughs> I, you know, I think the profession of teaching is, is, has, in the last six months, assumed so many new <laughs> rules. It, it's uh, hard to quantify what they're doing now. Craig, you've had a chance to measure your team against the very best 4A programs, and we know who they are. It's CARB, obviously, Warren Easton, Neville. You know, with Neville, you've had success and failure against Carr and Warren Easton. Haven't been able to get them yet. Uh, so having seen the best of the best in 4A, what, you know, what's it going to take for you to reach uh, that level, achieve that level by being able to beat these programs? What's the biggest thing that, that you have to get to or get past to be able to arrive at that? You know, I think the biggest thing is the opportunity to continue to play them. And, you know, we, oh, we good. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was what was really – we picked up a game against Carr and JV late in the season last year, and – our kids are so excited to play that game, and it's kind of a it's kind of a philosophy, I guess, that goes back to when Coach LeComp got the job at Mandeville. You know, he immediately scheduled John Curtis for Week One, and <laughs> so many so many people were questioning, "What's he doing? Why why is he scheduling John Curtis for Week One?" And then, you know, lo and behold, the first year we play him is the year that Joe McKnight senior, and they go and that's the year they win. <laughs> They went and beat Hoover. Look, they beat the brakes off of us. But what happened was, after two or three years, John Curtis became another team on the schedule. And it wasn't this big game that the kids were all wide-eyed with. It was just yeah, took the mystery out of it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, so our ability to play Neville, you know, two two times in the last three years, and obviously we're in the – in the championship game and, and Easton in the semifinals, you know, those games are ones that we that we want to play in more, and 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 hopefully that's something we can continue to do going further. Well, it sounds great, bud. Well, of course, tomorrow night it's Slidell at Lakeshore. What time does it start, Craig? Oh, we start at five thirty. Five thirty uh, tomorrow night, and then last but not least, talk about your. You know, your season opener with the schedule being muddled and having to start with week three. You have who, North Shore first? Who's your who's your opener against? Yeah, we start with North Shore. So, unfortunately, we lost our rivalry game with with Fountain Blue, and, and the kids were pretty bummed about that. Um, but we're going to start with North Shore, who's our week three. And then, unfortunately, we lost what is the new week two because that was Moss Point, Mississippi. But the schedules don't match up anymore because they started their season much earlier than us. So we're still searching around for a week two, and, and if we're able to pick one up, we will. Um, but then we turn around, and the kids are really excited. We play De La Salle uh, week three now. We moved that game to Strawberry Stadium at Hammond because it's a bigger mm-hmm. venue. Um, right. and we're going to play it on a Thursday night. So you know, obviously to be able to go play on a college campus is something the kids are going to be really excited to be a part of as well. Yeah, that's a great one. And then, of course, district play. Franklin's and Pearl River Salmon, accustomed to those rivalries that take place in your league as well. Uh, a lot of seniors to replace, but given the track record, uh, I'm betting on Lakeshore. And Coach Craig Jones, he's done a terrific hey, job with that program. Craig, listen, thank you so much for the time tonight. Keep up the great work that you're doing. And the last comment I'll ask you to make is just what does it mean to these kids to be able to finally get on the field considering oh, yeah. what's happened over the past six months or so? Man, it's everything. It's to see the look on their faces when every time I could give them some new update that was just creeping closer and closer to us being able to play. Oh yeah, you God bless. It, you could just see it in their eyes yeah. that it was like, you know, there was one point where, you know, we had got extended for four weeks in phase two, and then I told them after we had gotten through those four weeks, I said, guys, I can't promise anything, but I just get the feeling we're about to get put in phase three. And it's almost here, and and, and you just got to <laughs> believe that. And 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 they did. They just they just kept coming to work, and you know that month of practice without knowing anything was so weird uh, to handle because you really didn't have a game to prep for. And if we weren't, I felt like if we weren't creative with it, we could just get into this rut. Um, 
but I thought we did a good job of staying away from that. And I think the kids are obviously excited. And regardless of the, the hybrid schedule, we're, we're kind of back in school now. We're starting to get in those good. routines. You know, things are getting better. Coach, Coach, I don't think you have $100,000, so wear your mask on the sideline, okay? I don't want to get you fined. <laughs> And our, look, our school doesn't have two hundred fifty thousand dollars to back it up either. We're gonna, we're gonna. I figured they, I figured they could cover the. On. I figured they could cover the two fifty, but you, I didn't think you were gonna cover the hundred. But you'd have to go to Kenny for that. <laughs> not at all. That's, that's, a, that's a couple years worth of income right there. <laughs> Craig Jones, Lakeshore High School. Thank you so much for the visit. Keep up the great work here. Thank you, guys. Take care. My pleasure, Coach Craig Jones, head coach of the Lakeshore Titans.